Mount Snellcott High has way more going for it than just a classic Beverly Hills location and fully lush landscaping. It's also freeway close to several yummy restaurants that are drivable during our chronically too short lunch period. Ah, share. Without Chin Chin's Chinese chicken salad, life would be a cruel joke, no? You speak the truth, Dee, as always. If it's so great, how come the woman gets it without the chicken, without the dressing, and without the wontons? Which means I just spent $7 on some shredded lettuce. <laughs> you speak the truth, Murr, as always. Murray? Yeah. Let's forget, if only for a moment, how acutely not down I am with being objectified by the term woman. Oh, consider it forgotten. OK, let's focus instead on how many men will be glad to pay my way once you are out of the picture romantically, which could be very, very soon if you keep up that cheap attitude. Look, I... Nobody does the faux offended walk away like Dion. Don't be like that. <laughs> oh, some things never change. <laughs> I guarantee some things are going to change. With a new principal, they always do. And Ms. DeWitt's reputation is that of a disciplinarian and a traditionalist. Well, I don't understand why we even need a new principal. So we had to find one in the fabulous Mr. What's the dude's name, Sean? Mr. Lehman. No, that's not it. Mr. Lehman wants everyone to know he's fine. He's just uh, taking a brief leave because of a minor health problem. Uh, Betty Ford. My lips are sealed. You can count on me. Kisses. Amber, I trust that phone call is class-related. I was just speaking to my father. Have I ever mentioned that he is our community's leading shrink? Only a couple of billion times. Well, not that he would ever divulge confidential shrinky stuff, but word on the street is that Principal Lehman basically went mental. You're saying he went crazy? As Daddy is always telling me, crazy is a term that psychiatrists rarely use outside of their immediate family. <laughs> hey! The pursuit of our education has taken a back seat to the hoo-ha over this new principal. Will her policies be grievous, or will she rule kindly, a la Glinda, the Good Witch of the North? What is she supposed to be like? Come on, Miss Geist, we can take it. Well, I understand at her last school, Miss DeWitt initiated a uniforms policy. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> By uniforms, you wouldn't necessarily mean, like, uniforms. School uniforms? Take the guesswork out of dress codes. How would this uniforms deal actually affect, uh, just to use any example, say, really big pants? Yeah. So this would be uniforms, as in plaid and plain? God, that is so facts of life. <laughs> you tell him, Tootie. <laughs> <laughs> hit her, Tootie, hit her. Yo, hey, 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 hey. Girls, class, please. Now, on subject, who can name a situation where one regime replaced another regime in American history? Oh, that's easy. It, it's just like Saved by the Bell. The old class graduated and the new class just isn't funny. Hold up, at least they still got Screech. That's comedy. <laughs> Could it be? This Principal DeWitt person was sounding less like Glenda and more like the Wicked Witch of the West Coast. I mean, uniforms? The word lends a whole new heinous meaning to the term, well, heinous.
Share. Share. I say we go back to using butter and donate this olive oil to some Italians. For all I know, my new principal is going to outlaw that, too. What's her name again? Ms. DeWitt. She's supposed to shape up my school, whatever that means. The rumor is she plans to make us wear uniforms. Oh, my. Which would totally be a slap in the face of caring parents like you who have spent countless dollars on school clothing. Well, mostly at wholesale prices, thanks to my superior shopping skills. Has this DeWitt actually ordered a school uniform policy? Well, no, not yet. We don't meet her till tomorrow. My advice to you, counselor, save the fire and brimstone of your closing argument. You may not even need it. And remember, prejudice means prejudging. And that's always a mistake. Daddy, you are constantly, like, so fully reasonable. Well... That's what they fully taught us in, like, law school. <laughs> Dads just have a way of making us believe that everything's gonna work out fine. It's not their fault, it rarely does. Anywho, uh, without further ado, let's give a real Bronson Alcott High welcome to our new principal, Miss Phyllis DeWitt. Good morning. Well, I hope that you can all see, in spite of everything that you've heard, I only have one head, not two. Jared, dig it. She kind of looks like you, except all grown up. Even though Sean was comparing me to someone majorly older, it was hard to be offended. I would be way proud to look that bodacious if, God forbid, I should ever reach her horrifically advanced age. Uh, but what I have seen here is a school that works, and it works beautifully. So rather than me announce arbitrary new school rules, I've decided I'm going to observe some of your classes, and then whatever minor changes seem to be needed, I'll just do them on the fly as we go along. Is that cool with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what the heck? Why don't you all go take your lunch break early, huh? <laughs> Is that a mobile phone? That is a phone. <laughs> May I? Now, what a coincidence. I collect these. Oh, go have a good lunch, everybody. By the way, uh, lunch is going to be only on campus from now on. OK? Bye. Oh, this is bad. Amber Michael Bolton is bad. This could be infamous. You know, I hope she sends Glenn Close a thank you note because she is all over that Cruella thing. Ugh, give me that. No cellular contact with the outside world? Forced to consume starchy cafeteria cuisine? This must be what prison feels like. Sean, would you say this is meat or a fish? Depends. Is that gravy? Oh, God, I hope so. Just when I'm sure that my life can't get any more nightmarish, it does. Oh, are they closing that army base by your house? <laughs> <laughs> what? It was funny. I just got another one of our new principal's minor rule changes on the fly. She said we should leave our minis at home from now on because they make us look cheap. Huh. Actually, she said it made you look sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it works on many levels. And even though Miss DeWitt didn't mention the evil U-word, the dissing of Amber's miniskirt meant that the move to uniforms for Bronson Alcott High can't be far away. Why did Thoreau go to Walden Pond? To find a spot away from the distracting city lights where he could gaze up at the stars and free his mind to create. Mm -hmm. I'm always pretty creative under the stars, right, baby? Wrong. Creativity burden falls on me, Murray, having to come up with new ways to tell you no. That's going to be your homework assignment. I want all of you to find a spot to lie down under the stars tonight. It's your homework. <laughs> alone. And as you gaze up, try to feel the transcendental mystery that Thoreau felt. The mystery of his own insignificance in such a vast universe. Small problem. This evening is, like, so not right for this. I have a standing aromatherapy appointment, and Mr. Linda gets extremely overwrought if Amber, I... just do it, 
and be ready to report on the experience tomorrow. If I just switch some things around, no biggie. Anyway, uh, as the bell is just about to go off, uh, why don't you just take some personal time to uh, check in with yourselves? I'll see you good people tomorrow. Mr. Hall, uh, that, that didn't sound like a written homework assignment to me. Oh, well, there's a very good reason for that, Miss DeWitt. It wasn't one. I'm confused here. Did you not get my teacher policy memo? The one about daily written homework assignments in all classes? Well, if you mean did I receive it, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, did I get it? Not really. Yeah. This class is dismissed. Well, by your pugnacious attitude, I can very well assume that you are independently wealthy and you just do this job as a hobby. Oh, hardly. It's just that I think that a teacher makes the decisions about how to run a class, and that includes homework assignments, if any. Do you think what I just saw was running a class? Oh, you don't think so? No, everybody was talking. Dang, she shot him. I'll try a briefcase slam and shut you, moron. Oh. Well, that could be dangerous, too. They're coming. Are you okay? Not according to some people. We'll see you tomorrow, right, Mr. Hall? I'm afraid not, Dion. It seems that uh, Coach Deemer will be pinch hitting for me indefinitely. Okay, come on, let's move it along. Nothing to see here. Hello. Goodbye. I told you. Come on. Good afternoon. Miss Geist gave us the sad 411 on her hubby, Mr. Hall, getting suspended without pay. Good thing an accident of birth put me in the same house as the sharpest legal mind this side of Julia Roberts in that bad John Grisham movie. My daddy, who is the perfect mix of toughness and compassion. Sheldon, shut up and listen to me. It doesn't cost that much extra to sue everybody. Okay, maybe a little more toughness than compassion. Except when it comes to his favorite only child. So, how is my favorite only child? Frankly, not well. This new principal is evil and must be stopped. And we feel this way because... Well, because she just walks into my school and decides that she hates everything she doesn't understand. Sounds to me like prejudice. I guess she must be a lot like you. Like me? As if. Weren't you ready to judge this new principal before you even met her? Daddy, she thinks that we are a bunch of spoiled slackers who aren't even into learning. And the worst thing is, she busted Mr. Hall, who's only like the best teacher at Bronson. Well, you have plenty of passion in your argument. That's good. But it's just noise without actual evidence to back it up. You got any? Oh, I wouldn't even know where to look. Maybe I would. We'll uh, figure out a plan after dinner. Deal? Oh, Daddy, you're awesome. Oh, speaking of dinner, tonight we are trying my low-cholesterol cod liver oil-based pesto dish. Oh, goody. Which I am confident you won't hate without trying first, because that would be prejudice. You know, Cher, sometimes there's such a thing as paying too much attention to what I say. One thing's for sure. Either we find a way to get Mr. Hall reinstated, or we take up a collection and pay to put a hit out on Coach Deemer, who's subbing for him in our lit class. All right? Heck, take the title alone. Little women? Our society's never been able to get behind the concept of big women. And why were they little? I'll tell you why. Eating disorders. Go ahead, rent the movie, and you tell me that wimpy little Winona What's-Her-Name doesn't barf up a bagel every now and again. <laughs> nothing but net. Okay, tomorrow's assignment, read Much Ado About Nothing, and uh, be prepared to discuss the ado. As grim as this was, Miss Geist was worse. Her spirits were lower than the median IQ at a Baywatch rap party. He won't apologize. Well, hopefully he won't have to. Alphonse is a proud and stubborn man. Alphonse? <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful name. Oh, it's wow. classic, actually. Mm. Mr. Witt made it crystal clear. He can either stay on unpaid leave forever or agree to do things her way. All right, ladies, my sources promised me that Mr. Witt will be in her office alone after the lunch period. So that gives us an hour to get things together. All right, y'all? OK. Get what together? Evidence. We need something to back up our passion. I need more. 
We're gonna get Alphonse's job back. Oh. Oh! Who, who's Alphonse? Here's the raw data your dad's office sent over. If Amber shows up with her laptop, we can enter it and make the charts. Oh, well, can we work here during lunch? Oh, yes, of course. Can I do anything? I mean, I, I hate to just sit here like a yutz. You willing to make a run to Chin Chin? OK, I want a Chinese chicken salad. Oh, hold the chicken, hold the I sesame, want a Chinese chicken hold the, salad, the noodles, I want the hold the sesame. I We were told it was impossible to see Miss DeWitt without an appointment. But hello, impossible is Jim Carrey ever atoning for the cable guy? Anyway, thanks to Daddy's connections with the Board of Education, we were able to get our hands on some impressive stats. And this pie chart, it, it shows what? Th that Bronson's overall SAT scores over the last five years are the highest in the district. Well, except for Monroe High, but that's mainly the Koreans. Un-PC to point out, but hey. This page illustrates that Mr. Hall has more lit students in college on scholarship than any other teacher in the whole English department. Plus a student survey that says people cut his class less than anybody's. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Hall told me that he is eager to discuss teaching methods. But he can't be dictated to. Alphonse is a proud man. Who's, Who's Alphonse? Alphonse? Shh. Plus, we did a time and motion study that compares the time required to write, pass, and read a traditional in-class note with the time it takes to hit speed dial, communicate, and hang up the phone. Oh, the results are shocking. I mean, it shocked me. I don't know if I'm getting the point. The point is prejudice. <gasps> Excuse me? Am I about to be expelled for having the cha-chas to challenge her authority? Our clothes and phones and beepers and teachers may be clueless to you, but they kind of work for us. So we're just hoping that maybe you could just chill on changing everything just because it's different from what you're used to. <laughs> oh, um, thank you for your time. Uh, share. A moment. Now, you would really like it if I said that I was all wrong and that you're not really a bunch of spoiled, lazy, rich kids and the whole school is just running like a top and everything should just go right back to the way it was, right? Oh, that would be so cool. And yet, so unrealistic. However, the SATs and the scholarships. Now, that data hmm, got my attention. All right. I am going to sit down with Mr. Hall, and I will work something out that, well, we both can live with. And I agree. This campus is not the one that's the best candidate for switching to uniforms. <sighs> and the time and motion study, the one about passing notes versus telephones, now that was a brave try. But please. Yeah, we didn't even buy that. Go on, get back to class. Yes, ma'am. I came away from my brush with Principal DeWitt, the proud owner of two totally true truths, the importance of gathering evidence and making your case, and the rewards of a lifetime of moisturizing. When he returned to work, Mr. Hall went fully into the Wizard of Oz mode, i.e., there's no place like home. 
He was back, and it was as if his one-day suspension never happened. Well, almost. Oh! Well, I've kept you from fourth class period. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Hall told me that he is eager to start talking. Oh. What's he eager to do? <laughs> it wasn't me. Go rolling. Well, I've kept you from fourth class. Fourth period. The girl playing the lead was hot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this time and motion chart here is where I mess up now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the heck? It's half hour over already. Half hour, it's half done. <laughs> <laughs>